God bless you, brothers and sisters. So I'm going to get on here and share a dream that I had this morning. But before I do, I'm going to tell you what's been going on. So this morning I woke up and everything was kind of okay. And then my daughter started to wake up and I laid down with her and I started getting this tremendous headache. Um, she fell back asleep while I laid down with her. What's your mama? Hold on, hold on, baby. I record video. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, baby. So as I was laying down with her, I started to get this incredibly sharp pain behind my eye. And I was thinking it was a, possibly a caffeine headache. Um, hence, I, I got these glasses on. They're the blue screen protectors or whatever. I know, this is super weird. Uh, they don't have what I say. Um, but yeah, so I um, started to get this tremendous headache. And it, it was really bad. And I even went to the store because I, w I wanted to return something or exchange it. And I didn't even get down. I, st I sat there in the parking lot for like 15 minutes trying to pray, uh, ask God there's anything going on like show me like is there something going on is this of you is this of satan started praying and then i came back home took a bath took a nap and i just i had a dream and this dream there was three people i don't know i don't know who they were i was one of them we were looking at this one prisoner this prisoner was dark we we're kind of like I don't want to say taunting. We might have been taunting, right? So we went up to the door. Or no, no, no. What happened was something happened. I think the door opened slightly. And I went in the cell. Not in the cell, but like I went where the door was inside the chamber of rooms. And I, I looked in it and it was complete black. Complete black in there. And so he went towards the back. And I couldn't see him. And all of a sudden, he just opened the door and ran. started running after me. And I ran out with those other two people. And we went to this back, back corner and uh, room. It was a back corner room. And we closed the door behind ourselves. And he was he was about to get in. He was about to get in. He pushed the door open and then slammed it shut. And then um, I was waiting for it to click. When I tried to lock it, it didn't fully lock. You know how sometimes when you close the door and you lock in it's not locked because you didn't push it all the way through where the prong connects inside the hole of the doorpost anyway so that's what happened he kept on pushing and then i woke up and then so i just been asking god like you know i'm inquiring like god and like give me wisdom give me understanding pertaining to this and one thing i want to share with y'all is um man these these past three weeks i i the the spiritual attacks, man, have just been outrageous. Like I told y'all this morning, I had this most incredible headache. I thought it was a caffeine headache because I drink coffee. And I'm I'm done with coffee, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but I thought it was a caffeine headache. So I um, started to pray, ask God, like, truly, what is this, Lord? I just, Like the headache was horrible. I don't know if it was a migraine. Like I don't get migraines, right? I don't get headaches. And then so just uh, my my father-in-law, he can't walk right now. Just all of a sudden he, he gets gout. But to this point, it's so severe. It's very, very troubling for him. And then um, and just so much, so much I could tell you about spiritual attacks since uh, a little bit before my, excuse me, since a little bit before my birthday. And my birthday was October 2nd, and it's just been tremendous. My wife had a dream, and in the dream, I don't know, I'm trying to remember she forgot it too. I just remember that she told me, she she saw me looking at pornography, and then, or something like that. And then she asked me, I thought, um, something, and then I was like, no, 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 God delivered me a porn. So anyway... I woke up and I, or she woke up she told me and I was just like I don't like a porn anymore and I was like I really don't so I was trying to think is that is that dream really of God and then I started to look up the definition of porn and it's the definition um could also mean anything that 
provokes a strong compulsive desire, I think. So pornography doesn't necessarily mean sexually. And then God was showing me like, dang, like, like I, I was giving myself to, to my phone, like strongly a lot, um, other things. And I need to fast and repent of that and turn away from it. Another, a few other things. And we all do, if there's anything, anything in our heart that we're giving ourselves more to than to God, then we need to repent of that. He needs to be at the top. He needs to be above. He needs to be in the forefront and everything that we do needs to be through him and for him, for his glory. And pertaining to that, I was playing some, I like chess, man. I like chess. I, I don't know why, but just like stupid things that I, on Facebook, let me tell you about this too, this weird spiritual attack. So I get on Facebook, I go to marketplace cause I resell stuff, right? Um, different, different things that I do. So I was looking and then as I was scrolling through the products, all of a sudden there's these girls like half naked, y'all wearing like underwear and they call it whatever. I don't know what they call. It. I don't know what they call it. Anyway, they might have been bikinis, but I'm not staring at it. I'm scrolling and then I'm glancing over it and I'm just like, what the heck? Like, I don't look that stuff up. So what is it doing in my in my marketplace? And the thing about Facebook, if you understand, there's an algorithm and I did I did advertising on Facebook. So what I do is I strategically advertise. And let me tell you about this. This goes in hand with the business that I used to do. I don't do it anymore. Um, God willing, I might pick it up right now. I'm in a season where um, I don't know. I I don't even want to go into that. But anyway, so with advertising, I can start. I can target a strategic audience, an audience that, let's say, likes the band. Mercy me. And then make a shirt, do a design, a logo that says God's mercy is um, is is renewed every morning. Or I could target someone that likes Dewalt tools and I could put an ad for a tool. I build the website and all, all the stuff and I put the product on there, get a supplier. There's so much to it, right? But anyway, I'm talking about the the marketing aspect of it. I target the audience that will most likely be be the one to give in to purchasing the product. So as I do this, there's just testing. There's a lot of testing, but I'm talking about it in this aspect. Satan can see things that we cannot, and so can the enemy. He knows how to target you. He knows how to target me. He knows how to target Christians. And he's not going to target us with things that are not familiar to us. They're familiar spirits. Listen, I used to battle with with weed, uh, with alcohol, with um, with pornography, with lust. I got delivered a couple years ago. And uh, I'm trying to think what else. Pride, pride for sure. Greediness, um, just whatever. The Satan knows that he needs to strategically attack you. If you if there's something that you don't battle with, if you if he knows that more than likely you're not gonna fall unless there's an influence in your life. So hey, that's another story. That's another video I need to make because I had a dream about influences, the influence we surround ourselves with. But anyway, so pertaining to that, Satan is strategically attacking each one of us Christians, whether it's by family whether it's by stuff on the market. I, oh, so let me tell you, going back to the marketplace thing. So I told my wife, I was like, I, I'm, I was just telling you, like, to add up more on this spiritual attack, like, it's a crazy babe. Like, all of a sudden, there's, like, these half-naked females on the marketplace and the, on my phone. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, let me show you. Because it was on there. I would I go to the marketplace several times a day, right? And it was just on there all day. And then when I go to show her, nowhere to be found y'all they're completely gone this morning i get on marketplace they're there again she's not looking at it i'm telling you y'all i'm telling you satan is the god of this world jesus says that they that the god of this world satan has blinded the people from seeing jesus christ as lord and it's it's very serious y'all everything everything satan pretty much rolls almost everything um there's still there's still an aspect of the church moving on the earth. And that's another thing that I was wanted to talk about too. 
the restraining, the restraining of evil. There's a restrainer, and that, res and that restrainer is he's about to let loose, and that evil is going to flood all mankind, all mankind. And you want to make sure that you are counted worthy to escape and that God tells you to enter into your chamber and puts you and hides you in a room while he pours out his wrath on the world. The Antichrist is part of God's wrath. And then, of course, so there's so much more to go through. And I just want to tell you all, I, the spiritual battle is real during this season. Let's be pressing into Christ. Let's draw near to him in prayer and fasting and seeking his word. Let's honor him, be obedient. Let's not compromise in our faith. And there's temptations and we need to be wise and understand what the word or what the will of the Lord is. And do not be ignorant of the devil's devices, but we must know our enemy. Listen, we're at a war here. We're at a war. And just like when I play sports, we have to strategically understand our opponent. And he's not... He's very cunning. Satan's a cunning. He disguises himself as an angel of light. So I pray that the blood of Jesus covers us, the Holy Spirit fills us, that he anoints us, and that he helps us to draw near to him and press into him in spirit and in truth, and to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, with all of our spirit, with all of our mind, with all of our being, that there be no compromising in us, that he would cleanse us from all compromising, and that he would show us what his good and perfect will is, that our steps would be ordered by the Lord, that the way that seems right to us in Jesus' name, may he enlighten our eyes and our heart for understanding that we go not in the way that seems right unto us, that leads to destruction, but may we follow the will of God, which is in heaven. May we glorify the Lord in spirit and in truth. Honor honor him with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, again, just all of our being. And may he use us as ministering spirits, and may he send us out as laborers out into the field to reap a harvest. This last time harvest. And may he cleanse us from every spot, wrinkle, and blemish. Please protect us from all deceit, Heavenly Father. Please guide us into all truth and show us things that are to come. We ask for the gift of knowledge, the gift of revelation, the gift of understanding, the gift of discernment. That would be able to discern between your good and perfect will and the flesh and the enemy. Everything that is not of you, Lord God, that you would purify us. That you would help us to put to death the deeds of the flesh. Please, God, you are merciful. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on us, for we are sinners. Forgive us of our sins and trespasses. Purify our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. Have a great day. Hey, and pray for me, please. If you want prayer, comment down below anything you want prayer for. And if you're watching this video, if you're just watching, I'm encouraging you. Just go down, look at the comments. If someone makes a comment, say a prayer for them. Hey, you may not need prayer, but it says that when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. If someone down below is commenting that they're suffering, come on, don't, don't be rude. Don't be arrogant. Don't be prideful. That's part of the body. If you're part of the body, say a prayer for them. If you want to intercede, I encourage y'all. Please intercede. And Jesus kind of sent a standard for prayer. I want y'all to kind of hear this. Please, please listen on this. He said, he rebuked the disciples because when he was in the garden in Gethsemane, he went to pray and this happened twice. And he said, you couldn't, you couldn't pray with me for one hour. They fell asleep instead. So I'm encourage you guys, if you can, and you can, don't say that you can't, you block out a time and you pray for an hour at least. Write down a paper, a paper on a paper, things to pray for, and pray for at least an hour. Give yourself to prayer and pressing in and inquiring of Christ and making petition before him. Like um, the parable about the unjust judge, the lady, she came constantly, constantly annoying the unjust judge. And then he, he says, ah, oh, finally, he's going to do something. And he's all, hear what the unjust judge did. How much more will the heavenly father do for his children? So we got to keep pressing because the more we press in, there's some prayers that need to be answered. Acts 16, 31, I believe it is. Believe in you and your household shall be saved. Pray that over your family. Pray Hebrews, I think it's chapter one. Are not ministering spirits sent forth unto those who shall inherit salvation? Pray for your family, the salvation of them. And if you know that they're going to get left behind, 
or if it bears witness, pray first of all that they don't get left behind and that they have a born again conversion before the rapture of the church. And if 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 that don't happen, pray, Lord God, let your will be that you would save them during the time of tribulation and help them to endure all that shall come to pass and happen to them. I mean, just strategically pray. One thing I want to encourage y'all to do, pray the word of God. When you see a word, uh, a verse, anything that can pertain to anything burning on your heart or in regards to another person, pray that verse over them. The word of God is alive. It's it's alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates Look, brothers, sisters, the word of God like is very, very, very powerful. The name of Jesus, the word of God. In it, we find the will of God. And when we're praying it, in James, it talks about it. That I, th I believe it's also in John, but it says, if we pray anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. But he says, when you ask, you receive not because you ask amiss for what you desire. Um, you desire to spend it on your, your passions, your pleasures, your lusts. And then you say, oh, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity towards God? Stop praying for the things of the desires of the flesh. You need to start praying for the desires of Christ. We are seated in heavenly places. Our, we must have the mind of Christ. He gave us the word. We need to be renewed in, the, in, the, in, our, mind. in our mind. We need to be renewed by reading the word of God so that we can understand what the good and perfect will of the Lord is. And part of that is through the word of God. We must meditate on it day and night. Our our delight must be in the law of the Lord. And we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. No good tree that bears, there's no good tree that bears bad fruit. And there's no bad tree that bears good fruit. Are you bearing fruit? As Jesus said, produce fruit, meat for repentance. God bless you.